Welcome, welcome to WMCN's Profile. I'm here today with Tony Main of the men's basketball team. He's a senior guard. Hello, Tony. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, can you give us a little background history of like when you started basketball and like where you played in high school and where you started in college? Uh, I'm actually from Milwaukee. I went to uh, Milwaukee Thomas More, smaller private school on the south side of Milwaukee. And uh, originally out of high school, I actually signed a scholarship with Chicago State University. And uh, I didn't really like it there that much. And so uh, when I was looking at schools, my two best friends from back home, my cousin plays football here. So it kind of just fit that you know, I ended up here and I you know, like my decision. All right. So from going to high school basketball to college basketball, like, what are the main differences? And like, how do you adapt to college basketball? Uh, the two main differences are on the court, just the speed of the game is so much faster, and then off the court, you know, you got a balance between, you know, school, basketball, you know, it wasn't so much of a balance in high school, you know, you had your parents kind of guiding you and everything, you know, in college, you got to, you know, time management's a big thing, so those are the two big things to kind of get used to from high school to college. How did you find time? Uh, you know, I just, uh, I don't know, just stayed on top of my work, you know, I didn't fall behind in my studies, you know. The basketball wise, you know, made sure I was at practice, you know, made sure after practice I either, you know, went to the library, got my homework done. So I mean I think just time management, being able to, you know, take care of your time and figuring out what's important, what's not important are the big keys. All right. So how did how did you prepare for the upcoming season? Like what did you do during the summer in order to get ready for this upcoming season? Uh, I prepare every season the same way. I got the keys to my high school gym, so I just, you know, get into the gym after work, get in the weight room, so it's just the same kind of same kind of schedule every summer for me. All right, last year you missed the first round of the WEAC tournament with your injury. Well, what happened there? Uh, when I was a freshman at Chicago State, I injured my left ankle and I had uh, reconstructive surgery on it. And then against Stevens Point, uh, the last conference game of the year, I actually landed on somebody's foot. It, uh, it hurt and I could play the second half, but the next day, the next two, three days actually, it swelled up real bad and once the game time hit against uh, Superior, I wasn't, wasn't able to walk, so I had to miss the game. Well, how do you stay injury free now? Uh, I mean, with an uh, ankle injury like that, I know I wear ankle braces and everything, you know, it's just kind of a you know, freak accident, you know, you can't really prepare for anything like that, there's nothing you can do to stop it, you know, just, you know, if it happens, it happens. So you were just named D3Hoops.com All West All West Region third team, and last season you were tied for first point wise in WEAC with 22.3 points a game. And what do you expect out of yourself for this season, like in order for your team to be successful? Uh, just uh, you know, I'm the only senior on the team. Just uh, being leaders of the younger guys. You know, we had a really young team. Just uh, showing those guys the ropes of you know what it takes to be successful at the next level, the intensity that goes with it, the work that goes with it. So I think the big thing for me is just being a leader, being the only senior with a team full of a, you know, a lot of young guys, freshmen and sophomores. And how, how do you show being a leader? Uh, just coming to practice every day, working hard, being on time, being the first one there, being the last one to leave, things like that, you know, being vocal at practice, just uh, showing the guys, like I said before, showing the guys what it takes to be successful at the next level. Are you, do you like push them? Every practice, do you like? Are you like the coach? Uh, I mean, on the floor, I guess you could say that. But you know, Coach Cable is a very vocal coach too. He's on the sideline. You know, he definitely makes his presence known, so the younger guys know that. You know, if it's not me, that's going to get on him. Coach Cable and our other coaches are definitely going to get on them, so they know what's expected of them every day. Um, are there any seniors that graduated last year who made an impact and are going to be hard to replace this year? Uh, to be honest. Pretty much our whole senior class last year. Uh, Trevor Stratton was one of our main scorers. Uh, Andy Merkeline was our starting center. Uh, Austin Scott was our first guy coming off the bench. Andrew Haas was one of our post players. So I think you know, 
I don't think we replace all those guys. We just need younger guys to come in, step up, you know, play their game. You know, everybody on the team this year has a different game than the guys had last year. So we just expect the younger guys to step in and play their kind of game. So. All right. So, like, what off-season preparations has have like your team done together in order to prepare for this upcoming season? Uh, Right when we got on the campus, we had a uh, conditioning class that our coach actually ran. That was uh, four days a week, and we, that started the first week of uh, classes. So that, and then, you know, besides that, we would have open gym sessions together. So, I mean, we definitely got a lot of work in before practice started. So we were, we were pretty close as a team before practice even started, which is a good thing. And how many upcoming freshmen are there? Uh, around? Like underclassmen? We... We had six six guys returning, so we got. I think we have 17 or 18 right now. So for the most part, those uh, 12, 11 are freshmen. Well, la last season UWL was third in conference with um, a nine and seven conference record. Uh, what are your team's expectations for this season? Uh, our you know our our goal this season is to get better every day. That's our expectation to get better every day. Uh, coach wants us to work hard at practice. You know. When it comes to game time, you know, give it everything we got, play with intensity. So I think uh, the biggest goal we have this year is just to get better every day. And are there any like specific new players that are going to be starting this year? Uh, as of right now, with uh, you know the the first group of players that we have starting, uh, we have a freshman by the name of Lucas Tweed. He's a very good player, skilled. So uh, you know we're expecting big things out of him. All right. Okay. Last year, UW Stevens Point was the Division Three champions. And you guys beat them last year. So what what makes them such a powerful team? Uh, you know, they just they play really good as a team. You know, they have they have a few players that are you know very very good, but for the most part, they play really good as a team. They know they each player on their team knows what their role is. You know, they got really good coaches. And I just think you know every year they have you know it seems like every year they got new recruits that come in that just you know step right in and it, it, it seems like nothing changes over there. All right. Well, what does lacrosse have to do this year in order to make them, like, be not as powerful? Uh, you know, we got to, we just got to, I think we just got to play hard, bring intensity every day. You know, defense was a big thing for us last year that we, you know, we, we knew coming into this year we had to work on. And I just think that if we just come with the, the attitude that we're going to work hard, give it our best every single day, I think, I think we can, I think we can get up to those upper level teams. All right. Well, what are your conference predictions? Um, I think our conference predictions, I mean, it depends. I mean, I think we can, you know, it depends on how the younger guys do. I think we can, you know, I de definitely think we can be in the top three. Uh, you know, Stevens Point, Whitewater, River Falls are all going to be very good. But, uh, you know, I think, like I said before, if the new guys step in right away, I think we can definitely be in the top three. Do you think um, Stevens Point is going to be another powerhouse this year? Yep, absolutely. I'm, I'm almost positive they're, they're ranked number one in the preseason D3 polls. So they're, you know, like I said before, they're, they're, they don't ever rebuild, they just kind of reload. All right, All right your um, first game this season against Madison. Well, last year UW-Green Bay ended up beating Madison. Do you think you guys have a chance? <laughs> uh, I mean, we always have a chance. I mean, I don't want to, I'm not going to sit up here and say that, you know, we're going to lose automatically, but I mean, it's going to be a tough game. You know, we're going to be out, out heighted. They're going to, you know, definitely have more height on us. They're definitely going to have, you know, more skill at certain positions. You know, they're, they're going to be stronger. But, uh, you know, I think if we just go out there, play our, you know, play our game, play our, you know, system that we do every day in practice, I think, you know, we can definitely be competitive with them. All right. Um, well, what are you, what's your team doing in order to prepare for Madison? Uh, we're just, you know, Giving it everything we got at practice every day, you know, we got guys, you know, pushing and, you know, still make the team, trying to get, you know, minutes when the starting rotation, you know, comes about. Uh, I think we just, just push each other every day. I think that's the best thing we can do. And do you think this, this game is going to be beneficial towards your team? Is it going to make you guys stronger? Definitely. I definitely think, you know, we're never going to play, we're not going to play another team that's going to be as physical and as big as the Badgers are this year. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a great experience. You know, it's going to be a great atmosphere. And uh, I'm just really excited to get out there. All right. Is there any, like, difficult teams that you play? Uh, I mean, the whole WEAC schedule is difficult. Like I said, uh, Point, Whitewater, River Falls. We're in an Indiana tournament where we play the number two ranked team in the country. Uh, I mean, when you play in the WEAC, every, every, every game on your schedule is going to be a tough one. All right. Thanks for joining us today, Tony. Thanks for having me. Uh, now here's a look at your perfect pets.
She has opposable thumbs that makes it look like she's wearing mittens. This is Dan Rather, a brown tiger cat with white. He is a male of about five years old. He's really friendly. Ralph is a domestic medium-haired male of also about five years. He loves head rubs and has kind of a quiet personality. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Once again, the, new, uh, the number for the Cooley Humane Society is 781-4014. Well, this week on campus is M&M Week, and what this means is we're honoring Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. So with me today, I have uh, theatrical spoken word poet, Muhib Dyer. Uh, Mr. Dyer will perform tonight in Valhalla at 7 p.m., and admission is free, so I'd like to thank you for being with me today. And thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm a little black boy from uh, the north side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, the north side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin is a place that faces a lot of challenges for African American males in general. So, from the incarceration to the homicide to uh, a lot of life threatening kind of issues. So, growing up, in those circumstances is where I came from, happened to make it out of it, graduated from UW-Milwaukee uh, in 2000, and now I own my own uh, educational company called Flood the Hood with Dreams. Okay, so you've definitely done well for yourself since then. Trying. Um, yeah. What were the main factors that drove you to become a theatrical spoken word poet and a uh, community activist as well? Well, um, I guess that's two different kind of paths. To, become a, a, a poet, I kind of found that in, uh, in college. Yes. Um, I was on the campus of uh, UWM and um, had this organization called Scope back then and they used to hold these open mic sessions. And um, I kind of fell into, fell into poetry. Okay. Um, the community activist lane uh, kind of originated from uh, my mother. When I was younger, she was always volunteering at food pantries. She was always doing things to uh, help the poor and uplift the community. So I kind of inherited that, uh, that mentality. So with my spoken word poetry, it's kind of like a marriage between what my mother taught me and uh, the art. Yeah, two things that definitely uh, look pretty good on the resume and go well so, together. Yes. Uh, but since it is M&M Week, Let's focus on that a little bit. Um, how has Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X influenced your life and gotten you to where you are today? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a profound thing. Um, and, and because they were two different men, they affected me in two different ways. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., what I always admired about him was his, uh, his strength and his courage. Uh, you know, a lot of times growing up in society, uh, the most courageous men uh, we say, quote unquote, the most courageous men are those who, who stand up for themselves and maybe fight. Maybe they, they might be violent. You won't let anybody push you around. But it takes a different strength of courage when you can look somebody in the eye who may uh, have ill intentions towards you and still uh, be able to stick to your principles and say, I come in peace. So I always admire that about him. Uh, Malcolm X is a little bit different. Um, I admired Malcolm X because I believe that he was the voice of a people at a time who really needed that voice to be heard. And specifically with his speaking style, I always liked the fact that he made his language, uh, or what we would say, he made it simple so that uh, a person on a third grade reading level could understand it, mm -hmm. as, a, as well as uh, somebody who was a PhD. So he was just all inclusive in his thinking and how he approached people. Okay. Well, definitely two very influential men, it sounds like. Um, like I said before, you have a performance tonight in Valhalla. Um, it is called From Kings to Thugs to Presidents. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. It's kind of an interesting title. Yes. Uh, well, when, when, when I look at the play, to me it just captures the essence of uh, historically uh, my people, African-American people in, in its entirety. A lot of times when you look at the news today, it only gives you one va 